we're going to talk about uh, hydraulic pipe size and, and how you size uh, a line, okay? Because it is important to know that. Uh, for one thing, having the proper size, you can reduce a lot of heat and turbulence. Um, you know, just for, for example, take here the suction and return. You want to use schedule 40. Um, pressure is uh, scheduled 8160. And basically what that means is it's the, the wall thickness of the pipe. You know, so for a low pressure line, which would be suction and return, you don't need a thick wall pipe. But for pressure, you definitely do. So that's what we're talking about when they say schedule 40 or 160. Okay. Um, your oil in a pump suction line needs to travel somewhere between two to five feet per second. That's important. If you had installed a suction line that was too large on a pump, it's going to take longer for it to fill that suction line up. The pump could possibly cavitate. The same thing if it was too small. Okay, it would act like a fixed orifice, and the pump could not get the oil it deserves, so it would, it would cavitate, okay? Now, your return line is the oil needs to travel 10 to 15 feet per second. That will cut down the turbulence in the return line, turbulence in the reservoir. If they were too small, it's going to travel way too quick. You'll have a lot of turbulence in the course of reservoir, turbulence, okay? <clears throat> so there have to, has to be a certain speed for those lines as well. And look at here, pressure lines, 500 to 3,000 PSI, 15 to 20 feet per second. But now if you really think about that, that means in a pressure line, that oil is traveling 15 to 20 feet in a second. From me to that wall, it's there. And it's non-compressible. No wonder we got shot. It travels such a high rate of speed and if it ever deadheads on something, Boom! Hits it like a ton of bricks. Return oil travels 10 to 15 feet per second. That's not slow. But I know return oil is usually low pressure. But still, it doesn't have to be that high pressure. You can have shock in a return. I've seen it. I have, I, I've seen some hydraulic systems that the, the flow rate in return lines is so fast back to tank that they actually install... Uh, a little bladder accumulator for shock in a return line because if they didn't have it, the filter, return filter, would continuously leak. The shock would just keep blowing the seal. So they put a little accumulator upstream and that way there's no damage to the filter anymore. Okay? So, <clears throat> now, remember we talked about the compressibility of oil. Don't really have to worry about it unless we're going to be over 3,000. Remember that? Above 3,000, we want our oil to travel 30 feet per second. And you know why? Because it's a compressibility factor. Now the pressure is so high, it is compressing the oil enough to where the system would run sluggish. So we just speed up the oil by the size of the line. That's how it's done. It makes up for it. Okay. So let's look at um, a couple of charts here. I must still have this thing frozen. All right, we're going to look at the Schedule 40 chart first. Okay, so let's just say, too, that uh, maybe uh, we're going to put uh, a pump on a, on a hydraulic system. We're going to we're install it. Okay? We're going to use a 30 GPM pump, for example. Okay, so what we got to do is we need to size our suction line then. Don't we? we need to make sure we get the proper size line. So we said suction fluid needs to travel two to five feet per second. Okay. So this is all of our feet per second here, you know, and there are our volumes here. Here's our pipe size in inches. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to five feet per second. Always go to the highest number. Then we're going to come down to 30 GPM. And I don't see exactly 30, but there's 31.9. So we'll just go one just above, okay? And we'll come over, that'll give us a one and a half inch schedule for you. Now, you always go a little above because you want to make sure you, you got enough and not have enough, okay? 
If we were to stop at 23.4, look what happened to the suction line. It's an inch and a quarter, smaller. Probably would not be, be, be right. Okay, so you definitely want to go with 31.9. All right, so now we know what this suction line should be. Now, while we're on the Schedule 40, let's go ahead and size our returns so we know what they are. Return fluid needs to travel 10 to 15 feet per second, so we'll come all the way over to 15, come down to 30, and you see we don't have 30, but we have 40.6. We'll go with that one. One inch scheduled 40 return. Okay, so now we need to size our pressure lines. Now we're going to use a scheduled 80 chart here. Schedule 80 is for 3,000 psi and under. Over 3,000 is the Schedule 160 chart, okay? And we don't have that one in this for an example, but uh, you can get that. All right, so um, we said pressurized fluid needs to travel 15 to 20 feet per second. So we'll go to 20, come down to, well, since there's not 30, we'll go with 45. One inch Schedule 80 pressure line would be what we would need here. Okay. Now that's pretty much how you size it. Now, you could always use the charts and you could check a hydraulic system to make sure that somebody had designed it correctly because if they have the wrong size lines or too small, you're going to have a lot of shock. Could be a system just always run hot just because of the lines are too small. So, I mean, you could check it and verify if they are 